Welcome back to Wellness Wednesday. It's time to take your questions for our panel of experts. Please welcome back from Northwest Aesthetics, Olga Voloshina and Dr. Devin Zoller from Coho Medical Group in Bellevue. Welcome once again. Thank you. And we should say that your locations are in Bellevue and Kent, correct? Right. So I wanted to make sure we, we had that in. Olga, we had a question for you from a viewer. Skin tags, what are they? Why do we get them? And how do we get rid of them? Well, uh, skin tags mostly we observe and um, middle age elderly people and basically they appear on the area where uh, for example your necklace is or under your arms where your skin rubs against each other mm -hmm. or against piece of clothes or some um, jewelers uh, you we can take it off with laser you can burn it with um, liquid nitrogen it's a very simple procedure it's very pretty easy, easy to do pretty, that pretty pretty easy so that's just an in-office quick right kind of thing. in and out Okay, Dr. Zoller, does knowing costs like your patients do change the way people seek care? That's a great question. I, I think it does. Um, we found that, at least the Commonwealth Fund has noted that in, in this country we see our primary care physicians about half as much as any other industrialized country. And I speculate one of the many reasons for that is besides lack of access accessibility is cost. Nobody knows cost. There's no transparency. So people who haven't met their deductibles or have high deductibles, they're afraid to go to the doctor because they don't know how much it's going to cost them. And as a result, things get delayed and right. end up in hospitals. I think you're absolutely That's right. Correct. You know, it's for a lot of families, it's that choice of, do I really have to go to the doctor? Can I look it up on the internet? Which I'm sure you love because we mm. always find the exact right information on the absolutely. internet. <laughs> um, and so you have 24 seven access. People can call you up on the cell phone and Correct. you know if you're because your child never gets sick during the day right it's always Correct. at 2 a.m. or right, 4 a.m. Right. we can actually reach you guys 24 7 365 yeah all of our patients um, the way we maintain uh, somewhat of a lifestyle is that we, we do have a reduced <laughs> panel uh, the average outpatient internal medicine or primary care physician sees between 2400 and 3000 patients in his panel or her panel um, we What's a panel? A Just panel is a total population of patients that okay. a doctor is assigned to take Got care it. of. Uh, we reduce that to five to six hundred. Um, but hmm. as a as a member, you do get our, our cell phones. You can text message us. Um, if for some reason I'm out of the country or my partner is, you get my partner. So you can always reach us. No answering service. Um, no pagers, it's a direct line. And I'm guessing that also means you can spend a little more time with us when we come in for a visit. We have, uh, we guarantee same day or next day visits. Uh, we have no wait time and we spend at least an hour per patient. That is absolutely amazing. Okay, Olga, another question came in about brown spots, especially on the hands. I know I was in that generation that put baby oil and cocoa right. butter and just basically sauteed you know up until we were like 25 and so we've got the you know the brown spots to show it can you do anything about that yes we can do and it's uh, laser intensive pulse light or IPL it's been well known as usually uh, around five sessions okay months apart months apart how much yeah. do those cost generally speaking or does it depend on how much you do for hands, it's about 250 per session. Okay. Usually our patients buy in a package. Can we all come in on a group rate and just get kind of a head to toe? <laughs> of course. Think we could yeah. get a volume discount. I think that would be really we'll cool. Do IPL party. <laughs> <laughs> and Dr. Zoller, we had, a, had another question. Um, do you have access to medications in your office? Mm -hmm. Is that part mm -hmm. of your service? Tell me how that works. Sure, so part of, the, uh, part of those barriers uh, of primary care, uh, radiology, medications lab so what we do is we do offer over 200 medications in our office at steeply discounted rates the reason the way we're able to do that is we buy wholesale mm -hmm. and we distribute and of course we have software to be compliant with the label and, and all that but right. um, you know things like most generic blood pressure medications um, we can do for less than a dollar a month and, and we do um, because we want you to take your pill if it's recommended um, same thing with um, labs. We do. We have 288 labs and counting. Uh, we do on site. Uh, we send out for processing, but most of those are results available the next day. Because a lot of that stuff is common to most of us, right? When mm -hmm. we come in. So, how different is this from the way medicine is traditionally practiced? And what do you think this means about where we're headed with the mm -hmm. way we finance and pay for sure. medical care? Well, I think it's it, it's interesting in that. It's kind of a kickback to how things were 50 to 60 years ago. 
Um, you had a direct relationship with your physician. If you went to see him or her and you had a problem, then you paid cash or traded a chicken back in the day. Say, However, do you take chickens? Uh, we I don't, don't have one, don't. but if I did. <laughs> or it's open for discussion. But, uh, <laughs> um, I feel that as more and more people, for better or worse, are post pushed into cost sharing mechanism with their insurance, higher deductibles and whatnot, that it, it's in everyone's best interest to be aware of costs and to try to optimize primary care. And how does that change the experience for you as a doctor? It's incredibly rewarding. Um, we found, uh, I, I still work sometimes in hospitals and whatnot, and um, a lot of it, and uh, you know, I, I can say my wife is actually an outpatient uh, physician as well, and uh, in a traditional practice right now. And it's, no one, everyone goes, the, the sentiment is you go to your, your primary care doctor, or, and they're sitting in front of a computer, and it's a quick visit, five minutes or less, the doctor doesn't enjoy that. The patients don't enjoy that. But unfortunately, with billing and whatnot, it's the system that we have in place. So by removing all of that and the bureaucracy, if you will, I, I get to interact with a patient for an hour um, just practicing medicine, which is very rewarding. And then finding out enough about them that you make sure you've got the full picture of exactly. whatever it is you make a decision about. I can see why that would appeal to you. Olga, we had another question that came in about Botox. What's the latest in injectables and the things that last the longest? What, what can we invest our money in that we'll actually be happy to see still working six months from now? All the, um I say muscle relaxant as Botox, Xeomin on market, Dysport, they all last the same time, three to four months. Okay. Uh, dermal fillers, if you're looking for uh, volume replacement, they do last a little bit longer, six to eight months. There is newer filler on the market, Juvederm Voluma, mm -hmm. which lasts up to two years, and it's great. And um, there's another filler, Radius, which stimulates new collagen production. It's also lasts up to two years, those great fillers. Technology is a great thing. I'm just yes. going to install a twisty tie and just have <laughs> everything lifted all at once. That's my idea. You can find more information on our panelists by visiting our website at king5.com newday. Thank you for joining us. When we come back, 